This is a quick overview of the way in which we can convert some of our manual simulations into an automatic form. Let's take a look at the Nursing 316, the polaric stenosis uh, case that uh, is, is frequently run every semester for training. Historically, what we've done for the computer technician is to provide uh, a basic background. We've got baby Oscar, nine months, uh, I mean, one month old, nine, nine pounds. And what we do is we start with some simulation parameters, like the nurse arrives, and these are the parameters, and these are the, you know, the crying and coughing of the baby. And these are some of the things we look for. So what we observe here is that the technician would have to uh, set these parameters and then track what actually happens during the simulation and then provide, say, a new set point. In this case, the, um, the baby vomits, and so the heart rate goes up, and the blood pressure drops, and the temperature increases slightly, and the baby's still not hypoxic. But again, there's this call to the nurse practitioner. You do the classic SBAR reprovision, and of course, by the addition of the IV fluids, then of course the technician will know that the heart rate should start to drop and the blood pressure will rise. And we continue on and on. So basically what we have is a simulation of about 10 or 15 minutes in which we go through four basic steps. What I'd like to show you in the next couple of minutes is how this changes if we use the automatic mode in the uh, Laradol simulation technique. Let's take a look at how that template looks in Sim Designer. We still have the basic information on the patient. We have the learner brief, which we talked about before, learning objectives, and the equipment checklist. So in this case, what we've done is we've entered into Sim Designer the scenario, the brief, the objectives, and what we've got is a couple different uh, steps here. So um, as opposed to the technician or the, or the person running the laptop typing in all the various parameters, we can see that the simulation will automatically load the respiratory rate, the heart rate, a saturation, and of course the blood pressure, we recognize all that. And of course it'll also kick off with vocal sounds and a cough. And so what we do is we say, well, okay, we're going to start the simulation with these parameters, and then once the nurses have assessed the vital signs, we'll click on that event, and that will automatically send us to a new set point. So again, we see that the baby has vomited, and the um, and so the heart rate has gone up, the blood pressure has dropped, and so that creates some concern. So what happens is we say, okay, 60 seconds later, we wait for the nurses to give the S-bar, sit the patient up, and begin the effusion, IV effusion as a result of having uh, consulted with the uh, nurse practitioner. Then, of course, with the IV running, we start to see the changes in the edit state. And then, of course, the following uh, trigger points are that the nurses have provided the sweeties and obtained a venous blood, sa blood sample and uh, requested the, uh, the ultrasound be done. And what that will do is lead to the content baby. The thing to note here is that in the manual mode, you have to type in these parameters, type in these parameters, and type in these parameters. In this automated simulation, what you do is these are the fa these are the simulation phases that will be activated once these trigger points are met. And so the idea is that the correct treatment, as we see here on this phase one treatment of the baby, is assess vital signs, set the patient up. These are all the things that need to be done. So this is kind of exciting because what we do is we translate what was in the Word document, all of these different parameters. What we're going to do is translate it into this um, this new format, and then what we'll be able to do is is automatically run the simulation, and the operators have more more time to focus on what the um, on what the uh, the nurses are doing as opposed to what the um, what the the keyboard and what they need to type in. So now let's take a look at what this means to run a session in the automatic mode. First, we have to find the file that was contains the simulation. And the simulation we're after is polaric stenosis. So we'll load that in. And what comes up immediately is an overview of the situation. This can be printed out for uh, sharing with the other team members. It talks about the learn learning objectives, the learner brief, the equipment, um, and, uh, and, and the, um, what this model is being designed for. So we say OK. It loads this simulation. Okay, 
We're going to start the session automatically. Let's go full screen. Okay. So you see when you start the simulation, all of the parameters for the simulation are set to exactly what we wanted on the, on the, um, on the scenario, on the worksheet. And this is what the control, what the operator would see. Of course, we can um, look ahead as to what the parameters are and look behind. But essentially what we're doing now is just waiting on standby. So the nursing team is, has gone to the bedside, talked to the mother, done all these different things. And at some point, they assess the vital signs. So we check, when we click that, okay, what we see is that the uh, parameters are starting to change on the right-hand side over here. Okay, with the, there's a ramping up. And of course, the, um, the baby, baby has just vomited. And so what happens is the heart rate has gone up and the, um, and of course the, uh, the blood pressure is changing as well. So what happens is that, uh, you know, the nurses will observe all of these changes in the baby and then they call for the practitioner, uh, the consult, and they give the SBAR. So we note down over here that this records all the events that occurred and their timing and how long. Then we'll set the patient up, okay? Let's just say we set the patient up 45 degrees, okay? And then, of course, based on the um, consult, we do the IV infusion. So as a result of this, we've met the criteria for triggering the events to go into the next phase. So now we've got the baby crying. Notice the change over here in the parameters, all right? And so we'll start to see that the... Um, that the, uh, the vital signs will change, okay, according to this, this scale we're showing over here. Okay, see that the blood pressure is rising, the heart rate's dropping. Okay, so let's just fast forward a little bit. So now what we've done is we've said, okay, um, we've, we've started the IV infusion, we've started to see the uh, positive change in the, the, the baby's vital signs, and we're going to move on to that other trigger point, which moves the baby into the next phase, provide the sweeties, um, call for uh, a lab test, and then actually call for the ultrasound. And so now what we've done is we've moved into the final stage of the simulation, which is the content baby. And of course over here you can see what the final parameters are, we see that the blood pressure is returning to normal and that the heart rate is returning to normal as well. So essentially what you've got here is um, the operator only has to check off the, the triggers for activities of the simulation. These are all recorded down here and now the operator is not typing in all these different vital signs as we would do before when we had the when we're operating from the sheet and typed in things wrong, what we do is we use these templates now to create these simulations. I think this is a dramatic improvement over what we've been doing in the past.